Ahoy there, mateys! I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince. Welcome to Mustang Prince Oro Reports. With today's blog taking place in Neverland, the franchise we'll be focusing on will be the Disney Fairies. Which stars a fairy who's known to be the best friend of the boy who never grows up. After two movies that focuses on Peter Pan and a few cameos in shows like Disney's anthology series and the House of Mouse show, the people from Disney Toon Studios gave us four films which gives us some character development for Tinkerbell. Now in the first film, which was released in 2008, Tinkerbell tries to find her place at Pixie Hollow by proving that lost things can be useful for her job, and in 2009, Tink goes on a journey to find a treasure that was shipwrecked on an island north of Neverland. Then in the summer of 2010, Tinkerbell meets a little girl who has a fascination with fairies. And then two years later in 2012, Tinkerbell crosses into the winter woods and meets her twin sister. Now, personally, these four films really were interesting and, and well, they were really enchanting. So, like, here are my ratings for each of them. Now, I don't have a copy of either of these films, but I have rented each one from Netflix, including the newest film that I might be blogging today, Pirate Styled. Released a DVD on April 1st, 2014, the movie is The Pirate Fairy. Now, let's cast off. When a misunderstood dustkeeper fairy named Serena steals Pixie Hollow's blue pixie dust and flies away to join forces with the pirates of Skull Island, Tinkerbell and her friends must embark on an adventure of a lifetime to return it to its rightful place. However, in the midst of this pursuit of Serena, Tinkerbell's world is turned upside down. She and her friends find that their respective talents have been switched, and they have to race against time to retrieve the blue pixie dust and return home to save Pixie Hollow. So, what did I think of this film? Well, let me just say that this film is squash buckingly cool and sweet. It surely gives some build-up to a few characters that everyone has seen in Peter Pan. And also, it does give us a lot of magical touches to it. But, I'll explain why I like it in my Mustang notes. The film was originally titled Quest for the Queen, Peggy Holmes, co-director of The Seeker of the Wings, signed on to direct this movie. Disney announced in January 2014 that former Project Run Runway winner and fashion designer Christian Siriano would be in charge of creating the ensemble costumes for the fairies, especially Zarina's. Siriano stated that, that I love the challenge of this project. I haven't designed for an animated character before, and I'm excited to take my skills into Zarina's world. She's a unique and new character, and I wanted to help her make her memorable and iconic. Disney characters are everlasting, and I'm so happy as a young designer to help create a bit of Disney history. Well, I gotta say, he's done a good job with it, too. It's almost like taking a big step to trying something new. Now, everyone, mostly everyone knows that in the past four films, there were some background songs in it. But what are my thoughts on the new songs in this film? Well, gotta say, the soundtrack features an original song titled Who Am I, which is performed by Natasha Bagingfield, as well as her previously released song Weightless. It was initially used on the film's scratch record, but so well received that Peggy Holmes decided to make it permanent. However, there is an original song that needs to be mentioned in this, for this film, too, which is sung by the pirates of this film. The song is called The Frigga That Flies, 
And I gotta say, it's a really catchy pirate song in his, as well. Like, not just sung by the pirates or, or Hook, but it's also sung by Zarina, too. Now it's time to move on to the voices of this film. Our title character, Zarina, is voiced by Christina Hendricks. In this film, Serena is a curious dustkeeper fairy who is intrigued by blue pixie dust. She wonders at its endless possibilities and many magical properties. Though Fairy Gary told her that it is forbidden to tamper with pixie dust, she misses the, in the ingredients that the book Pixie Dust Experiment shows, and she finds out how it works. A year after she leaves Pixie Hollow while joining the pirates, her skills with pixie dust has improved. Not only does she switch Tinkerbell and the other's talents, but she was also able to grow poppies that could put the fairy to sleep with pollen and grow a pixie dust tree on Skull Rock. Her sword skills are neat too, even if her sword is only a pin. The rest of the fairies are as follows. Tinkerbell, voiced by Mae Whitman. Silvermist, voiced by Lucy Liu. Rosetta, voiced by Megan Hilty. Iridessa, voiced by Raven Simone. Fawn, voiced by Angela Bartice. And Vidya, voiced by Pamela Adlin. Next up is our villain, James Hook, also known as Captain Hook, who's voiced by Loki himself, Tom Hiddleston. In this film, James possesses as a benevolent lad who appreciates Serena. Throughout the film, James shares sympathy with Serena and learns from her pixie dust alchemy skills while they plan to create their own pixie dust tree that'll generate an endless supply of pixie dust, enabling the pirates with the ability to make their ship fly, thus advancing their goals in plundering the seven seas beyond the second star and become wealthy beyond their wildest dreams, much like any other pirate. However, this scheme leads to James Hook to betray and imprison Serena in a lantern, revealing himself to be a ruthless villain, only looking out for himself. Hmm. So Tinkerbell isn't the only fairy to be imprisoned in a lantern. However, what I think about Hook, I mean, his, I mean, his attitude, pretty much, when he reveals is revealed to be the villain, it pretty much describes what he becomes later on. It's almost like as if you're saying, like, this 20-year-old version of Hook would later become this hook in the Peter Pan films. I mean, I mean his, his, his red captain suit, his, well, fear of the, uh, how do I say, like, frustration about clock noises, and his hatred for fairies, even his squash buckling skills, and also the part at the end when he gets chased by baby TikTok. The rest of James Hook's crew is, are voiced by Jim Cummings, Carlos Ponce, Mick Wingert, and Kevin Michael Richardson, who do an amazing job voicing as these squash-buckling guys. I mean, these guys can be a bit funny, and some of them kind of remind me of like some of the pirates that I joined up with in musical theater villas a long time ago. Now the last character I want to talk about is my is is TikTok the Crocodile, who is without a doubt my favorite Peter Pan character ever. In this film, TikTok is a baby thinking Rosetta is his mother, then getting the fairies out of a trap in the galley that the pirates put them in. Being an animal fairy, Rosetta guides TikTok in defeating the pirates, then TikTok swallows the cook's alarm clock during the battle, earning him his iconic ticking sound. 
much to the lamentation of the pirates. By the way, every time I think of Tent Talk, it always makes me think of the time that I used to play Tent Talk back in 2006. And I gotta tell you that even though my mom didn't like me as that role, I thought it was a lot of fun chasing Hook in that costume. And now it's time to set sail for my final words in this movie. Overall, The Pirate Fairy is a squashbuckling film filled with magic and action. The characters are memorable, especially with the ones who get some build-up. The animation is beautiful, and the music and songs are really fun, especially with the flying scenes. I'll give this film a 98%. Well, that's all for now, mateys. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go try to see if I can contact with some help for my 4th of July blog. Be sure to join me for that one. Mustang Power!